Well, again, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Electric Vehicle Summit. This is the first one of these we've had in our state. In fact, I don't think many states have had such a thing, and I don't think that there are many places in our country where you see this kind of talent, collaboration, communication, and cooperation going on among such uh, talented people, companies, uh, and assets. South Carolina is in a unique position based on our automobile industry, all of the automotive people that we already have here to step right into, without breaking a stride, into the electrification of these vehicles. It's gonna take a lot of work. It's gonna take a lot of working together. But just a few details. Uh, we are now home to over 500 automotive companies and 72,000 automotive workers. The industry, automotive right now, has about a $27 billion economic impact on our state. Among those manufacturers, we know that BMW is planning to be about 50% electric by 2030. Proterra, is, in, right here, is already making electric buses. Volvo it will plan to be 100% electric, electric by 2030. A Polestar in Berkeley next year will be producing vehicles there, Mercedes by 2023, and Oshkosh Defense uh, very soon. And so, the, and we've had a $20 billion investment, capital investment in South Carolina, and primarily in manufacturing since 2017. So we are, we are really moving and moving fast. And we have all the assets, we have the talent, we have the vision, we have the discipline, but what we need to do is to have the coordination and work together to put it all together because, the, as they say, the sum is always greater than, uh, the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, and that's what we're doing here. So I've issued an executive order today. It's a major step forward. Our manufacturers are going to fit right into this, but we want the public, the municipalities, everyone living in the state, who travels or works to understand what, we, what we're doing and where they can get the authoritative information on where they can fit into this and what it's going to mean to them. So this executive order I've signed today requires the Department of Commerce to designate an electric vehicle coordinator. What will that coordinator do? That coordinator will serve as a one-stop shop and be the point of contact for the business community industry stakeholders, as well as the general public on electric vehicle related issues. This coordinator will help guide companies looking to invest in South Carolina, all those looking to grow, and will establish an informational website to serve as a resource to those interested in the state's effort, as those in the state and those out of the state are out of the country. Number two, the executive order directs the South Carolina Department of Employment and Workforce headed by Mr. Elsey, who spoke earlier this morning, to evaluate the state's electric vehicle-related workforce availability and capacity, and to explore opportunities to enhance training efforts where and when it's necessary. And I remind everyone, our research universities, our four-year schools, and also, importantly, our great technical college system are ready to work and the executive order creates an interagency electric vehicle working group. That working group is made up of state agencies which will work collaboratively to develop a comprehensive plan for deploying electric vehicle related resources and infrastructure across the state. The group will work collaboratively with local governments to provide recommendations for prioritized locations to establish electrical vehicle charging equipment along our interstates. And of course, there'll also be an effort off the interstates. The Interagency Electrical Vehicle Working Group includes the South Carolina Department of Transportation, the Office of Regulatory Staff, the South Carolina Department of Commerce, the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, and the State Fiscal Accountability Authority. So, in a nutshell, we, we, have the, we have the team ready, we have the assets, and we're putting it all together to add this new area of great innovation and progress to what is going to be 
a new era of economic prosperity in South Carolina for all of our people. Secretary Lights. Thank you very much, Governor. Uh, we are truly excited at the Department of Commerce. Uh, automobile manufacturing is the largest sector of our manufacturing uh, base in South Carolina. So it is an industry that is incredibly important uh, to our state today, and we want to take steps to make sure that it remains uh, important to our state's economy for the future for decades to come. And to do that, uh, we look forward to working with the industry as we make this historic transformation uh, to switch from the gasoline combustion engine uh, to the electric, battery electric vehicle. Uh, this is a change that hasn't occurred since the days of Henry Ford. We look forward to being part of it and uh, we look forward to working with the industry and businesses around the state uh, to bring that trans transformation to South Carolina. Thank you. Secretary Hall. Hello everybody, I'm Christy Hall. I'm the Secretary of Transportation for the state of South Carolina. First and foremost, I wanna thank you, Governor McMaster, for your leadership and guidance on this very important issue for the state. Um, we look forward to working with the partners outlined in your executive order to continue to refine our approach to the deployment of nearly $70 million in federal uh, funding that's been designated and sent to the South Carolina Department of Transportation for EV infrastructure deployment. As you heard the governor mention, our initial concept is to uh, help facilitate the implementation of charging infrastructure along our interstates with a particular emphasis, emphasis in the rural areas of our state. Um, but of course, having that collaboration that the governor talked about at all levels of government, across that spectrum at the state level, up to the federal level, and of course where the local uh, government partners at the city and county level is incredibly vital as we continue to refine that plan. Not only is the governmental cooperation important, but reaching across to other stakeholders in the industry, whether it's uh, the trucking association, vehicle manufacturers, uh, technology deployers, um, uh, you heard the governor mention the workforce development. All these items are incredibly important as we continue that co cooperative and collaborative effort to bring a signature project uh, to, to fruition here in our state via Team South Carolina. We look forward to being part of this very important effort and initiative for the Palmetto State. Now I'd like to turn it over to Sarah Hazard with South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. As Christy said, excuse me, Secretary Hall said, my name is Sarah Hazard and I'm President and CEO of the South Carolina Manufacturers Alliance. As part of our organization, we have the South Carolina Automotive Council, which is made up of our state's OEMs from the automotive sector and all of their suppliers. In South Carolina, we are proud to have an international reputation for being a business friendly state where industries can grow and thrive. A significant reason for this is our Team South Carolina approach, where we work collaboratively, hand in hand, to do what is best for our businesses and for our communities. This is the key ingredient to our secret sauce as to why we have such a strong presence of world-renowned companies, especially in the manufacturing sector, who make the Palmetto State their home. Our diverse and robust automotive industry is a prime example. Over the past four decades, the automotive industry's roots have firmly set in throughout South Carolina, and today we are an automotive manufacturing powerhouse with seven OEMs making everything from cars to SUVs to vans to buses to postal vehicles to ATVs. And we also have hundreds of tier one, two, and three suppliers here. This industry is not only a significant driver of our state's economy, but is also an innovator, advancing new technologies for the worldwide marketplace, and that's what's happening now in this electric vehicle space. There's no doubt that consumer interest and demand for electric vehicles is increasing. This paradigm shift is spurring innovation and advancements from the parts and systems that operate a vehicle to the technology and infrastructure needed to charge and maintain them. And South Carolina's mature automotive ecosystem uniquely positions our state. And with change, 
We have to be prepared, and South Carolina, just like the rest of the nation, must ready ourselves for the shift to electrific electrification of our transportation system. This evolution touches on so many fronts, from economic development opportunities and recruiting EV-related companies to our state, to the impact on our existing automotive supply chain, to what this means for our transportation infrastructure and where charging stations should be located, to the impact on our electric grid, to the highly skilled workforce that will be needed. This is why today's announcement by Governor McMaster is so important. We applaud the governor's foresight and leadership in bringing Team South Carolina together to deploy an EV strategy for our state that helps prepare us for the future. Governor, thank you for your support of our industry and for all you do for our state. Thank, thank you. you. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Does anyone have a question? Senior correspondent Chip McKinney. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the seventy million is uh, coming via the uh, the, uh, the recently passed federal uh, reauthorization act. It's part of a bigger package that came to the state f to fund infrastructure. There's other grant programs that are also being authorized at the federal level uh, to complement not only the EV infrastructure piece that we're working on, but uh, public facilities, um, some other grant opportunities especially on the transit side, which is obviously important to a state like ours, especially with Proterra being in the state and a lot of our public transit entities moving over to electric. So there's other opportunities at the federal level. Um, some of the state funding that's uh, directed towards the state DOT and other partners, that's uh, not the gas tax, but other components of the funding, we'll, we'll look to leverage a little bit of that to make the match as required, as well as looking for opportunities from our local partners uh, for matching funds. So uh, this, I believe, is, as the governor has mentioned and others have mentioned, this is the start of something very big for our, our entire state. More questions? It'll, it'll bring careers, great careers. It'll uh, exercise our training and education facilities. We expect them to grow and get stronger. We already have the best technical college system in the world and we're providing scholarships there, $49 million this year for high demand jobs and this, this fits right into that. But uh, the, our, our automobile, automotive industry has grown, as I mentioned, from uh, virtually zero in 1993 when BMW came in to thousands of, of uh, businesses and of course workers. And, and this will be another another move all, all of those assets all those facilities will they won't go away they'll keep working and growing as we adapt modify and move forward so this is a, but we're in a position uh, we think our, our team thinks with with all the assets we have and the the uh, the, the, uh, what the those that are interested in, in coming here to add to what we've already built on the in the last last years it, it puts us uh, in a, a great position to have enormous economic expansion. Well, I, I don't know if that we are the first, but it's uh, the, the first that I've, I've heard of that's, that's like uh, at all, or that's like, like this. And we just had the, the um, South, the Southern States Energy Board met in Charleston just a few weeks ago, and we're going to meet. I happen to be the chairman now of that, and we'll be meeting here uh, next year. And that that fits right hand in glove because we're talking about electricity, and we want to have plenty of it. But um, we are we are really really growing, and the, uh, the future is very very bright because there are all kind of careers and jobs that come from this. And and as as one company will come in to to build something or to package something or to whatever they do there are others that, that, that support that so we, we, we look to that this will enhance the education and training of our people it'll, it'll provide uh, not just jobs but careers because it changes and each builds on the other and layer upon layer 
anymore, for anyone. Well, the people that are investing hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, they could go anywhere in the world and they come into South Carolina. And the, the reasons you see you all around us here in, in Greenville, uh, this is a beautiful place uh, with great leadership, of course, uh, with uh, Knox White, the, the mayor. But um, our, our people are the people that these investors want working in their, in their plants, in their facilities, doing their work, and that is quite a, a compliment to our people. Okay, thank you very much.